is the great privilege that I have looked forward to for some time. I've often heard of this San Juan Valley and waited with great anticipation for time to come. And with Brother Pittman and Brother Wilson and many of the other ministers that I have met in different parts of the country and been invited here for around seven or eight years. And tonight to be here, it certainly is a grand privilege. And now we do not um, want to take too much time for Mr. Vale and Ann, they speak in the ministers. And we come to be with you for these five days. Wish we could stay long, just to walk in the building and feel the, the, the spirit of the meeting seems to be right at the very first to begin. Oh, I, I like that. And now it goes to show you've got five ministers here that's been teaching you. And with prayer meetings, that's what makes the meeting, is people who are praying. Now, a minister cannot bring a revival himself. It takes God to send a revival, and it takes people, his people, who are willing to congregate themselves together and pray. Then he said, I will hear from heaven if the people that are called by my name shall assemble themselves together and pray. And he would hear from heaven, and he would heal it. And we know his promises are true. I thought tonight it would be a good time just to get acquainted. Speak of what we are here for, what we stand for, what our purpose is of being here. And then we get kind of get acquainted. Tomorrow afternoon is an instruction service. And tomorrow night again, we pray for the sick. We do not think and place all the emphasis on praying for the sick. We take pray for the sick just like when you go fishing. You take the bait, but you never show the fish the hook. You just let you see the bait. And when you get the bait, you get the hook. So that's what we preach the gospel. We believe first that a man must be born again. He must be born again. And then if he's not born again, then he cannot understand the kingdom of God. Jesus told Nicodemus that. Except the man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom. The word see there is the English translation, which really means cannot understand the kingdom of God until he's born again. Now, many of you have read the book of the life story. We don't have any programs to sponsor anything. We don't sell things. Just We have a few books. I think they said they had about six or seventy-five. That's all. Because the books are out of print at the time being reprinted. And then they have some of the pictures, which are the angels of the Lord, which will be sure and talked about later. Now, we're not here to represent or to build up any certain denomination of a church. We are here to represent a person, and that person is Christ. We're here for a principle, and that's for his, his principle. We come to greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus. We're not against any denomination. We are for all denominations, regardless of what creed or color, we stand for all denominations, but no certain one. So therefore, it's a union need. Everybody can feel good to come. Not in a church, in an auditorium like this, or just a little basketball room, and anybody can come. Everybody's welcome. Protestant, Catholic, Jew, Asian, infidel, anybody that wants to come can come out right ahead. They're all welcome. Now, by me, most of the time people think that we are here to represent the divine healing. No, we're here to represent the divine healer, Christ, not the divine healing. And there is no power in myself or any other man that can heal you. God has never given man power to heal another. What the healing is, is faith in the finished work that Christ did for his church at Calvary. It is something that's already been finished. It isn't power given unto man. It's power in a faith in what has already been appropriated for the church. Salvation. Salvation is first. And salvation, you say, I might ask tonight, 
How many has been saved two years? Many hands that go up. How many has been saved six months? Perhaps many hands that go up to six months ago. But you wasn't saved two years ago or six months ago. You were saved 1900 years ago when Christ died in Calvary. You just accepted it. Your personal faith accepted it two years ago and six months ago. He was wounded for our transgression. With his stripes, we were healed. It's faith in a finished work. Some men have faith and ministry. We believe that God has set his church, and any church he set gifts in his church to bring his church together, keep it coordinated, and to work for the good of his church. We believe that there are five gifts, ministerial gifts, in the body. That's prophets, or apostles, prophets, teachers, evangelists, and pastors. Then gifts and calling are without repentance. In the local body, there's nine spiritual gifts that operate through the entire body, anywhere, on any of the people that's in this body of the church. I know that sounds maybe to some of you people, that, that may be something new to you, but it's the scripture, it's a promise that the Almighty God made, and He keeps His ever promise. In the time of the need, if I ever say anything, or any of my cohorts that says anything to a teaching that's not found in this Bible, you let me know about it. This is the truth, God's Word. Now, God can do things that's not written in the Bible, but yet we believe that this is God's program, the Bible. Now, any of you teachers, especially of the whole business of ministerial groups, in here you'll find teachers to tell you this. In the Old Testament, they had two ways of knowing whether a man was telling the truth or not. That was, they had a, a dreamer or a prophet, and if the dreamer dreamed a dream or the prophet prophesied, if it was a little written down, they take you down to the temple and they had what is known as Urim Sundom. What that was was the breastplate that Aaron wore. He had all twelve tribes of Israel's birthstone on his breast. And then when the prophet prophesied, and if the, that light didn't make a conglomeration of light that reflected supernatural, then no matter how true the prophecy seemed to be, it was wrong. And no matter how real the dream seemed to be, it was wrong because God refused it. The your son was the showdown, the supernatural answering back to the prophet. Now, that priesthood was done away with. The Aaron priesthood, the Biblical priesthood. But now God has a new priesthood, and He has a new year of Sunday. This is it, the Bible. If in here, it must come from the Bible. Your te our teachings and everything must be the action of the Holy Spirit according to the Bible. I have never seen the Holy Spirit at any time in my ministry. I was ordained in the Missionary Baptist Church 27 years ago. And I have never belonged to any other church but the Missionary Baptist Church. I now, I don't belong to any. I just never wasn't put out. I just walked out to be free in order to put my arms around the whole body of Christ and say, we're one. We, we are one. Jesus died for that principle that we might be one. And this will all men know that you're my disciples when you have love one for the other. And in my many times around the world, and in the mission fields of seeing our Lord, I've seen in South Africa just recently 30,000 raw heathens come to Christ at one altar call. 30,000. There's about every 200,000 there. Bombay, India just recently, where we had around 500,000. There's no way to estimate how many come to Christ at one time. I believe that we are now living in the last days. I believe that this is the last message, this message of grace that God has given to his church. I believe that any time Christ has come. That's why I'm here tonight, trying my best to call to every side of the world and all that I can do to let people see that he is the true and living God. And if he is the only door, the only religion out of the thousands of religions in the world. The Christian religion is the only one that can prove that their founder is still alive at the Jesus Christ. I've stood with the greatest religion in the world, 
and Muhammad, we all know that. Second is Buddha. Third is Christianity, that Catholic, Protestant, all together. And I stood with the Bible in one hand, with the Koran together, and challenged tens of thousands of Mohammedans and all together. Let the God that is God speak. Nothing to be ashamed of in Christianity. If this is the truth, then I'm through with it. If this is the truth, I won't, it's the biggest error the world ever had. But if it is the truth, then I'm willing to die for it. And I have found that every word is the truth. There's no shadow of doubt in my mind. That's the reason I, it would be easier for me tonight. I don't come for popularity. That's one thing I never want. I don't want to be popular. I want to be honest. And, I, and it's not money. Anyone who's ever been in my knees knows I uh, do not let them beg bum money no more at all. No, <laughs> sir. I just won't stand still for them at all. They pay the expenses of the meeting and that settles it. At the end of the meeting, they give me a love offering. If the expenses are paid, that goes right in the back. If there's anything left over my love offering, which there hasn't been for a long time, but if there's anything left over, it goes right straight to the mission field to go to work for God. Just as quick as it can go. And we have no, no money. We're not here for your money. No, sir. I'm here for one purpose. That's to help you. And you help me. And we're here together to glorify God's beloved Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And now, we, tonight, I thought I'd kind of give you a little outline of what we, we believe. Now, first, I want to say that usually in the meeting, we get our prayer cards that Dr. Dale hasn't already went through this. He said he had Now, when we first started, I was just lining the people up, and it was like a... a well, the people get to this site, you get the line. So you couldn't have that. It's not a, an arena, it's a church. It might be an arena in the national, but we're using it for a church. This is a scramble. Then I let all the cooperating ministers, which I see here tonight, looks like a piece of the group here, there's at least 25 ministers, I guess, cooperating, maybe more. And he's 50 of them. Now, if I give each one of those ministers 100 cards, Who's going to get their group up here first? Well, the group that gets up here, that's going to settle the whole meeting. Then what's the other ministry going to do? Then that calls feelings between the ministers. Then I send some men down to pass out the prayer card, and I call one selling a prayer card. That settled that. Then I put my son in for him to get out prayer cards, for I knew he wouldn't, or my friend here, Leo Mercer, or Gene Gold, which are my tape boys, and I need them to get out cards. Otherwise, well, I had a minister that his own denomination was, he had full strings. These strings, but he had to do it. So then I took my own son. He'd get out the card, this little square card with a number on it. You can take it and be lined up according to number. And then this, then we have this. If they give them out a number of past 25 or 30, they throw it on the floor. We don't want that. It won't be called. Well, then what I would do, I'd have some little child. But sitting up in front, I'd say, how far can you count, honey? Come here. You start counting where you, he ended off, or she. Then I started from there. Believe it or not, Mommy had a junior to come out of there and stop at her number. So, see, it's just a human element. You get it. So then, here's the way we do it. We come down. And then, we started going down and giving out the entire, all the prayer cards we'd ever get out the first day. If somebody come in late, Come in the second day, there's no need to come in if you run another first day to get a prayer card. So what we do each day, we get out so many cards. From that night, no one, the, the boys you're giving them out, no one else. They bring them right back there before you, mix them all up together, and you can have maybe this one, number one, and next you get number 30, number 60 or 90, something like that. Then no one knows where they're to start from. That night, I just wait until the Holy Spirit tells me, then I'll start and call a few to the platform. And then we start praying for them. Then as soon as the Holy Spirit starts the work, as many of you have been in the meeting, well then it moves to the audience everywhere. The word of people are that's sick and afflicted, and they're healed by the, their own personal faith in Christ. Nothing I have in myself to do it. I'm just your brother. That's all. And I'm but Christ. Their faith in Christ does the healing. And now, each evening, or each day, then cards will be given out. Each day fresh. And then sometimes when we get a lot of cards out, we'll have a line 
They are ministering, brother, to line up lines and pray for the sick all of us when we take up the cards and just show you that God hears any minister's prayer, anybody's prayer. Don't have to be a minister. You can pray for the sick. God will honor your prayer. See, what it is, is a faith in the finished work of the Lord Jesus. Today we hear so much about healing. And there's so much difference. You can hear the medical doctors say about the, um, the surgeon. Now, we have nothing against doctors, operating, or anything. Not at all. I'm not here to take the doctor's place. I'm here to pray for doctors. If you're here, I'm here to pray for your patients. My friend, God's child. And we're not here to take your patients. And here we find that the doctor, the medical doctor will say, well, don't you go over to that surgeon. He's just a big old butcher. He just cuts his pieces. You don't need that. All you need is some medicine. Go over to the surgeon. You don't need sugar pills. You need an operation. The chiropractor will say, the both doctors will say, you don't need to go to the chiropractor. The chiropractor say not the osteopathic. All of them say keep away from the preacher. But what is it? It's selfish motive. Exactly. For we know that surgery, medicine, osteopathic, chiropractic, all of it does good. And if man has the right mind, has the right attitude, the right motive, we put our arms together and march forward trying to help our fellow man to have a little more pleasure while he's here on life, to have a good health. The whole group. If it's not one man wanting money for this and one wanting money for that, and if I can operate, if I keep it waiting in operation, or something like that. Now, all doctors don't do that. That's not the attitude of all doctors. They're all chiropractors and so forth. They're all preachers. But I found one thing. I found in my ministry a whole lot more doctors believe in divine healing than I have preachers. That's right. That's right. More doctors believe in divine healing and the energy of the preachers. Some of them are very, very hard to look into. Well, I've never met an honest doctor. I was interviewed at Mayo Brothers. Many great clinics, you can imagine how it is around the world. And I've, I've found very few doctors that didn't believe in divine healing. It's the way it's presented, see? If you present yourself as a healer, the doctor knows that. Now, there's not a medicine in the world that can heal you. That's right. Now, remember that. There's no medicine, no doctor, no clinic ever heal one person. All healing comes from God. <laughs> Did you hear that? All healing is from God. I believe that God's word is so infallible that there is not one iota of it that's wrong. Psalm 103, 3 said, I'm the Lord and He heals all your diseases. If there could be anything else He is you besides God, then God knows something wrong. And remember, when the circumstances arise and the way God acts in that circumstance, He's got to act every time after the same way that He acted in that time or He acted wrong when He acted then. God doesn't learn more. God's infant. You believe that? Yeah. Uh, we get smarter. Generations keep getting smarter. But God can. He's perfect to begin with. And if God healed the sick, they were in Israel there when they were in the march in the journey, and he hosted up a bright serpent or an atonement, and God made an atonement for the healing man because people were in need, he would have to do the same thing today or he acted wrong when he did it there. Right? He can just give more medical knowledge. <laughs> but he raised up a brass surface. Now remember, let's see how simple it is. What if I cut my hand tonight with a, with a knife and I fell down on the platform gate? You take me down to the, to the undertaker establishment and they embalm my body. Then you say, well, that finished your life. Now, there isn't all the medicine in the world that not heal that cut in my hand. A medicine that heal a cut on my hand, but heal a cut on my coat. It heal a cut on that floor. Well, you say, Brother Ben, medicine wasn't made for your coat or that floor. But all right. Now, if I cut my hand and fail, get it, let them give me penicillin and sulfur drugs and visit me, cut an environment through to make me look natural for 50 years, and every day give me a shot of penicillin for 50 more years. And at the end of that 50 years, that cut just the same as it was the day it was cut. Now, if medicine heals the human body, then why not heal it? Well, you say the life is going out of it. That's it. 
You tell me what life is, I'll tell you who God is. <laughs> God, medicine doesn't build tissue. Medicine only keeps clean while God builds tissue. What if I was working on my car right there and broke my arm? Now I run into the doctor. I said, Doc, heal my arm right quick. You're a healer. I want you to heal my arm. He'd say, Mr. Brandon, you need dental healing. Well, that's right. What I need the healer, I don't need to heal my arm. What he does, he sets my arm and God heals. Right. Healing only comes from God. If I cut my hand, the doctor can give me stuff or drugs. Or you give me penicillin. And I say, what about penicillin? What about when you got pneumonia? And the doctor gives you penicillin. That doesn't heal you. Certainly not. What is penicillin? Penicillin like rat poison. <laughs> if you got if you got a house full of rats and they're eating holes through your house and you put out rat poison, that kills the rats but it don't pass the holes. <laughs> right. Well that's what penicillin. It kills the, it kills the germs. But it doesn't pass your body. God has to create cells again to pass up what the germs is eat out. Absolutely the truth. There is no medicine that can heal. Medicine isn't made to heal. Doctors, good doctors tell you that medicine doesn't heal. Medicine, Jimmy Mayo said, on their great clinic, a great right up the old place, how they knew around the doctors, was accepted. But they said that we do not profess to be healers. We only profess to assist nature that is one healer, that's God. That's true. That's God. So God is the healer, and faith in God is a finished work. Let the doctor give you every so much medicine. If you don't believe it's going to help you, you'll be a dead patient for your sins. Right. It's your faith, you've got to believe it. Oh, you can't go home tonight without faith. If you think you can't move and believe it strong enough, you'll sit right there. Right. You've got to believe it. Now, how can I believe it, Brother Ben? How can I see how I'm going to get well? Here's some time I go down in the mountains of Kentucky to where I was born. And then I was talking to a fellow. And he said, Brother Ben, I just can't accept that. He said, I have to see it through before I can accept it. He had a lane or anything. Of course, you people up there don't walk the lane or say they have to up there in those mountains. And so I said, where do you live at? He said, across the mountain about two miles. I said, how are you going to get there? It's awful dark. He said, I'm taking this lantern. I said, well, then you can't see your house. He said, no. I said, well, how are you going to get there then? What? He said, well, you pack the lantern. I said, that's the same thing you do now. Step in the light, walk with the light, it'll show the road right straight on to the living. So you just keep on working. Walk in the light, it's here in the light. The blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses us from all unrighteousness. Now, I want to take a text from the scripture. Now, I've got about 20 minutes. I want to take a text from the scripture, but before we open this blessed holy word, let's speak to the author. Most gracious God, we thank thee tonight for the Lord Jesus who died to be a propitiation for our sins and our sickness. And we thank thee because that he has given us this grand, marvelous privilege of sitting together up here in this great valley with our people. And we ask that his great presence will be known in our midst night after night as the revival goes on. Grant, Lord, that it will, something will happen that will cause an old-fashioned revival to break out through this country, that tens of thousands of lost souls might be brought into the kingdom of God. Grant that every church has got an empty seat may be filled as it is revival, and remain that way until Jesus comes. Let these ministry brethren, shepherds of the flock, we would ask, dear God, that you would just make yourself known to them in a very special way. Bless the laity, the sheep of the fold, bless every denomination, and now manifest yourself, Lord. And the scripture it is written, faith cometh by hearing, hearing of the word of God. Now we pray that you will speak to us through the word, while we ask it in Jesus' name, amen. I want to read a portion of scripture just by the way to speak to you from the word for just a few moments before the prayer. Just to get you acquainted with the ministry. Now, 
Everyone understands that when the cards are to be given out, we're not claiming to be healers. It's your faith in God. All that understand that leaves at the end. That's that good. Your personal faith in God. Now, in the book of St. John, the 12th chapter, and the 21st, we read this just for a few moments now. We'll take this and get a context of our way. And there were certain Greeks among them that came up to the worship at the, at the feast. And the same therefore came to Philip, which was the Bethesda of Galilee, and desired him, saying, Sir, we would see Jesus. And now for our text and for our campaign theme in the book of Hebrews, the 13th chapter, the 8th verse, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now this that I have just read is a portion of God's eternal word. And the heavens and earth shall pass away, but God's word shall never pass away. It's as eternal as God is eternal. And when his church gets to a place that they can accept his word upon those principles and those faiths, that God's Word is a part of God. And then His Word, in the beginning, was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So therefore, we have read words that have never an end. As long as there is an eternity, these words shall remain the same. And these hungry Greeks come up with enthusiasm with this remark. Sir, we will see Jesus. And as your brother, I don't believe that there is a man that's in his right mind or woman that ever heard that precious name and know what it meant or any mental conception of what it meant but what has desired to see Jesus. Amen. If I could ask this audience of people tonight, would you love to see Jesus? Every person here would say, yes. Well, then the scripture says that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Then why can't we see Jesus? If the scripture says he is the same, then he's got to remain the same, or the scripture is not infallible. They just meant it for a certain time. But it isn't so. The Bible says he's the same yesterday, today, and will be forever. So then this must be right. And if yeah, that's not right, then there's none of the rest that is right. It's all either right or it is wrong. Amen. And you never see anybody that ever believed it and was saved, but what did believe that it was right. Every divine promise is yes. And I take record of this. I believe that the right mental attitude towards any divine promise of God will bring it to pass. If you can just look at it in the way that it was written. I might not have faith enough to do that. But I certainly wouldn't stand in somebody else's way who does have faith to do it. If I can't do it and the promise is made, I'll say, God bless you, my brother. I might not be able to walk where Joshua walked. I might not be able to walk where Enoch walked and just took a little afternoon stroll and went home with God. But I won't stand in somebody else's way who can do that. Amen. I believe the word is infallible. And it says he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, how can he be the same? Now, he's the same in principle, same in power, same in attitude. The only thing different is Jesus seen from yesterday. Is this his promise? Then he had a corporal body here on earth, like we have. 
But that body was given for a sacrifice, raised up from the dead, set at the right hand of the Father, to make intercessions upon our confession. And then he said, a little while, and the world sees me no more. Yet ye shall see me. Now that word, world, means the world of God, the unbeliever. They will see me no more, yet ye shall see me. That's the church, the believer. For I will be with you, even in you, to the end of the world. Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. St. John 15, he said, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He said that about his church. He go away and be the vine, and we be the branches. Now the vine does not bear fruit. The vine only energizes the branch, and the branch bears fruit. The branches. That's right. Notice, if the vine cannot bear fruit, it's depending on its branches, and the branch cannot bear fruit until it's energized by the vine. Then if you people up here seen a pumpkin vine, that pumpkin vine would bear pumpkins if the life of pumpkin is in the vine. <laughs> if it's a watermelon vine, it will bear watermelon if it's got watermelon life in it. If it's a grapevine, it will bear grape because the life of grape is in the vine and it will energize the branches and they'll bear grape. If the Christian church is the vine or the branches in Christ, they will do the works of Christ and bear the life of Christ. Amen. By their fruit you shall know that. Now, then the way that he is today is here in the form of the Holy Spirit working through his church, performing the same thing that he did today. That makes him the same yesterday, today, and forever. His life, the life that was in Christ, which was God, produced the kind of life that he lived then. That same life comes into his churches, his church members, since they have been cursed by his blood and given the Holy Spirit access to work through them, bears the same fruit that he bore. So that's where the world can see then that Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, if I say to you, Methodist, what do you think about that? You say, that's true. And you will only pray for every talk you contend. But he said, I earnestly contend for the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. The Baptist, thanks there contending for that faith. The Pentecost, thanks there contending for that faith. The Nazarene, thanks there contending for that faith. And I believe, I certainly believe. But now let's go right down to the Bible now and find out. Now, if we can find what Jesus was yesterday, then he's got to be the same now and forever, or the scriptures wrong. Amen. Now, does that sound reasonable? Yeah. If we can see what he was when he was here on earth in a body, called the body, then we can see what he would be in his body of church if he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. True. Now, I read tonight out of St. John. Now, uh, let's go back in the Bible to St. John 1. And just read a few moments. And let's see what he was yesterday. Now, if we went to look for Jesus, as these Greeks did, now he wasn't a great, forceful speaker. The scripture said that his voice was not heard in the streets and so forth. And John was a forceful speaker. John went forth as a preacher, really preaching, but doing no miracles. Christ came behind, not doing really much preaching, preaching, but great miracles. And anyone that's got any spirituality can see the way of that same spirit to the earth. Think of our brother Billy Graham, going forth like John, no, no miracle, just preaching, bearing the people. Amen. Now, notice, now when Jesus, after he was baptized and went out of the water and the Holy Spirit came on him, and the powers of heavens and earth were given into his hands, 
We find him in his fast in the wilderness and then coming out and immediately he began his earthly ministry. And then there was a man. I would thank God when you go home tonight or tomorrow, you women, you read that thing, that book of St. John while the revival is going on. Notice and compare it scripture by scripture of Jesus. Now, if Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and forever, and will manifest himself the same yesterday and forever, how many would like to see him? Let's just see your hands while you're at I'd love to see Jesus. Well, if the scripture says we can see him, then why can't we see him? If that promise was made to us, then we've got a right to claim that promise. And if God will keep that promise, he'll keep every promise he ever made. Amen. Certainly will. Many, huh? Many of you are not a Christian. God kept his promise. When you believe him, he saved you. Many of you have the baptism of the Spirit. And then when you believe that, maybe in the face of difficult, but you see the scripture promises, you receive it. Because you believe it. Well, healing's in you also. And his promise is to you. That's right. By such you were healed. It's all settled as far as God is concerned. Jesus has paid the price. Now, in St. John 1, we find a fellow by the name of Philip and uh, Andrew. And Andrew was Simon Peter's brother, so he went and got his brother, and his name was Simon. And he told him to come see who he found. He touched him in the presence of Jesus. Let's watch the great Holy Spirit now. And as soon as he came into the presence of Jesus, Jesus said, Your name is so and so, and you will be called Jesus, Peter, which is thy interpretation of those stones, and your father's name is Jonah. Now you said that's a scripture. How many know that's a scripture? <laughs> that was Jesus yesterday. As soon as this man made it, he knows who he was and who his father was. Peter later was given the key to the kingdom. Right. Then this fellow, Philip, which was of the city of Andrew and Peter, he had a good friend which was a church member. Very good man. Was looking for something to take place. He goes 30 miles around the mountain. If you're ever in Palestine, you can look it up. From where Jesus has had in his revival, 30 miles around the mountain by foot, and found a fellow by the, by the name of Nathaniel, which was his buddy. And when he came up, Nathaniel was under a tree praying. And he said, Come see who we have found, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And we would call this without any feeling. Maybe Nathaniel was a very good Presbyterian, or a Baptist, or some other denomination, Catholic. Well, he raised that, but he said, now just a moment, could there be any good thing come out of Nazareth? <laughs> and I think that he gave him the best answer that any man can give. He said, come see. That's the best way. Come be convinced yourself. Amen. Don't just hurry up and sit up and run out. Sit down, wait for the Lord. Go back the next night. Test it out. Amen. Come and see. Amen. Don't sit at home and criticize. Amen. But come see for yourself. And he just made ready and started around the mountain with Phil. And on the road around, no doubt, the rock, Philip began to tell him, you know that old fisherman down there? Oh, a brother Simon? Yes. You know, as soon as he got into the presence of this one from Galilee, from Nazareth, he told him what his name was. And what his father's name was. What would be no Mystery to me if he didn't tell you who you were when you come. See, he had seen something. Uh -huh. He knew what he was talking about. Uh -huh. Or I can imagine a 
Bible says in just a moment, you probably went off on the deep end. Well, come on, he said, you go see. And on the road, when he come up into the place where Jesus was praying for the sick, he might have stood out in the audience. He might have come into the line. That I don't know. But when he come in the presence of the Lord Jesus, Jesus said, Behold an Israelite in whom there is no God. Now that was strange. Wait a minute. Find out. All people dressed alike. He could have been a Greek. He could have been an Arab. He could have been anything else. But Jesus said that you are an Israelite, a honest and just man. It astonished the little fellow. And he said, Rabbi, when did you know me? But this is your first time ever seeing me. Hallelujah. When did you ever know me? And Jesus said, Before Philip called you, when you were under the tree, I saw you. Hallelujah. One eye. Thirty miles around the mountain, I saw you under the tree. That was Jesus yesterday. If he's the same today, he's got to be the same today. And will be forever. Now notice, close. Now who was this guy, Nathaniel? He was an Israelite, the Jewish nation. Now, when this miracle was performed on him, he said, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. In other words, you are the Messiah that we look for. That's what the true believing Jew thought when that was performed because he knows that was the sign of the Messiah. Many true believers know it today. Or he doesn't change. But that was a lot of people, great church members, bishops, priests, doctors, who were smart and intelligent. What did they say? They said, this man is a fortune teller. Yeah. Beelzebub. A evil spirit. And Jesus said, I'll forgive you for that. But when the Holy Ghost has come to do the same thing, one word against it will never be forgiven. And this will never end the world that is to come. Uh -huh. So you see where we be standing? In this thing. The Holy Spirit will come someday and will do the same thing as one word against it is the unpardonable sin. Because it has called the Spirit of God an unclean spirit. Blasphemy against the Holy Ghost. That's talking about it. Calling like you call me a devil. That would be all right. You might be all right with that God forgive you. But you call the Holy Spirit an evil thing. It's never forgiven. You should know that. Now, that's what the, the truth you believe, and that's what the educated and orthodox you believe. One said you are the Son of God because you did that. And the other says he's an evil spirit. He's possessed of the devil power to do that. They couldn't figure it out. They had no spirituality about him to know in the spirit. God's things are hid from the eyes of the wise and true. Yes, they were reading the same Bible. They couldn't recognize that to be the Spirit of God. They know all the theology. They know all the, the, the church doctrines. But they didn't know the Spirit. They didn't know the real true Scriptures. And now notice, here he goes a little further. And we find him in Acts, I mean in St. John, the fourth chapter. He was going down to Jericho, but he had me go up to Samaria. Now, if you've ever been in Palestine, that's altogether different. Go way up in here in the mountains to Samaria instead of going straight down from Jerusalem to Jericho. <laughs> but notice, he had me to 
it goes wrong. Uh, we're going to find out in a few minutes why. And he sent his disciples away about me. And a lovely woman come up, beautiful, but for the sake of talking, we believe that she was a, a woman of ill fame, prostitute. And Jesus, a middle-aged man, though he was only 33 years old, yet the scripture says he looked 50. The Bible said that. You say if you not a man over 50 years old, say you see later here, now we know he's got a devil. See? Probably his work made him look old. But notice, he was setting over against a law. And in Palestine and in the eastern countries, a little panoramic like that with dying seems to be going over it, and he's a well. And that place was that way. And Jesus sitting there, and this woman come out. Why, he knew she was coming. And notice, and when she started to let the pot down into the well, if you notice it's got a window there, the women all come out early. Get the water, and they talk and get the women, all we do is talk and get the water up, you know, put it on their heads and walk away with it. But this woman come out about noontime. Why, she couldn't come out with the rest of the women. She couldn't associate herself with the rest of the women. Because she was a woman of ill fame. And she had to come get her water when she didn't have to mix with the rest of the women. And Jesus sitting there, he said, Woman, bring me a drink. Remember, she was not a Jew. She was a Samaritan. And there's only three races of people Jew, Gentile, and Samaritan. Ham, Shan, Jacob's people from the three sons of Noah. What's on the appeal with the Pentecostal key? Day of Pentecost. Jews, down to Samaria, Samaria, then up to the house of Cornelius, and from then on the Holy Spirit was just free. He opened it to those three nations of people, or uh, people, classes. Notice, and this Samaritan woman would come out, and he said, woman, bring me a drink. And there was a segregation like they had in the South. That is not customary for you Jews to ask the Americans, but we have no dealings with each other. He said, but if you knew who you were talking to, you would ask me for a drink. Uh, and I'd bring you one that you don't come here at all. <laughs> and she said, the well seems that you have nothing to draw with. The conversation went on. What was Jesus doing? Contacting your spirit. I told him, found in trouble. And he said, don't get your husband and come here. She said, I don't have any husband. He said, you said right. Well, you got five husbands. And the one you now live with is not yours. Watch what the woman said. Did she say, well, you're a devil? Did she say, you're the Elzebub? Or have you got telepathy? She said, sir. These things. But who are you? And the told me the things that I've done. Is this the Messiah? Hallelujah. If that was Messiah yesterday, it's the same today. It remains the same today. And he declared himself before the Jews that way. He declared himself before the Samaritans that way. But to you, brethren, and to you, school teachers, or Sunday school teachers, and so forth, the readers of the Bible. He forbid his disciples even to go to the Gentiles. Not one time did he ever declare himself like that before the Gentiles. Why? He was leading it for this day. And the way he made himself known in that day to the Jews and to the Samaritans, if he declared himself as theology or any other way to the Gentiles, he did wrong when he acted that day that way. He's got to be the same way to be the way for it. <laughs> same thing. This is the Gentile time. That was the end of the Jewish generation. That was the attitude some of them felt. A few disbelieved him and called him the devil. Others believed that he was the Son of God. Those who believed him to be a devil, they got a devil's reward. But those who believed him to be the Son of God got the Son of God's reward. Yeah. And this is the day of the Gentile. This conversation is just about finished. Amen. Amen. God willing, this week I'm going to get into some prophecies just coming from the Holy, the 
glorious and so forth, showing what has just taken place. We are in the end time. This nation is going to die before morning. And it's just as active, 90% more active than it is 10% not active. Right, we'll get into that later, because we haven't time now. Now, when Jesus went down one time he crossed the sea, he crossed over and a little priest said, Come to my daughter, she's laying sick. And a woman that was in menopause, and she had a blood issue for many years. She touched his garment and turned around and went back out of the audience. Jesus stopped and said, Who touched me? And everyone of them denied it. But Jesus was imbued with a spirit of God. He was a man himself, but he was God inward. Do you believe that? Amen. Today in this modern age when you try to make him just a prophet. He was not a prophet, he was a God of the prophet. A lady that belongs to a Christian science church said to me some time ago, she said, Mr. Graham, you try to make Jesus divine. I said, he was divine. Yeah. If he wasn't divine, he's the greatest deceiver the Lord ever had. No, that's right. She said, if I'll prove to you from the scripture he wasn't divine when he accepted, I said, sure. She said, in St. John 11, when he went down to the grave of Lazarus, he cried. The Bible said he wept. He could not be divine and weak. I said, woman, your argument is thinner than the broth made out of a shattered chicken and star today. I said, you know better than that. I said, he was wet that night. He was a man when he was weeping. But when he stood and straightened that little frame up and said, Lazarus, come for it. And a man had been dead four days, come out of the day. That was more than a man. When he was come down off of the mountain one night hungry and looked around for something to eat and couldn't find nothing. He was a man when he was hungry. But when he took five biscuits and two pieces of fish and fed five thousand, that was more than a man. Amen. That was God, Amen. the Creator. Amen. He was a man when he was so tired, laying out down that little old ship, it tossed out like a bottle stopper. On a mighty ocean, 10,000 devils of the sea swore their family. He was a man when he was laying there asleep. But when he put his foot on the frail of all the seven said, Be, be still. That was more than a man. He was a man when he cried for mercy at the cross. But when he broke the seals of the two out each morning and come forth, he was more than a man. He proved he was God. Love me, dying me, save me, bearing me, carry my sin far away. Why is he need to justify sin forever? Someday he's coming. Oh, glory to the Lord. More than a man, God manifested his flesh. There, when that woman touched him, he looked there and said, Who touched me? That was the man speaking. Everybody united. But that power was in him. He found a little woman. He told her what her trouble was. He said, Thy faith has saved me. That was Jesus yesterday. He's a saint today. Not the Old Testament, the New Testament, Hebrews. says, He is a high priest that can be touched by the feeling of our infirmity. How would you know you touched him as he spoke back to his face? Just as he did yesterday, he'll do it today. Or he isn't the same yesterday to do it for him. We're living in the last days. Watch it in St. John 5, 19. Walk through a pool. There lay great balls and thousands of people laying up, laying halt, withered, blind, waiting for the movie of the water. Here he comes, a few days taking his hat. Here he walks through that crowd. There was a lame halt, blind, withered. Walked right through them. Walked around for a sound of men laying on a pallet. Now you southerners ought to know what a pallet is. I was raised on one. So I put it at the door. All that keep cool. And there, laying on this pallet, he found a man. He might have had prostate trouble. He might have had TB. Whatever it was, it was retarded. It had it 38 years. It wasn't going to kill him. 
And Jesus passed all the rest of them by and went to that one man and said, Will thou be made whole? How many knows that's the scripture? Amen. John the sixth chapter. Why? How did he do it? Because he knew he had been this way for a long time. God had showed him where to go. Now when he was questioned of it, St. John 5, 19, think of it now, 5, 19, when they were questioned, Jesus said, Jerry, Jerry, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing in himself, but what he sees the Father doing. How many of that scripture? All right. What is it? He never did one miracle, never performed one thing, until God the Father showed him what to do, and God the Father was in him. A little while in the world will see me no more, yet you shall see me, for I will be with you, even in you, to the end of the world. The works that I do shall you do also. Lord, oh, I am with you always. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. As far as healing, it's already purchased. As far as salvation, every redemptive blessing that it was included for you in the atonement is yours by faith. A minister could preach the word. I'm not a preacher. The minister could preach the word. And he could make it so plain to you. He'd accept it like that. That God's good. And if you could take my word for it, that would be enough, but not God. No, he moves every stone that can be moved to see if he can get you to believe. That he sends his spirit into it. Sometimes it works in different ways. He sends it into it to reveal himself. And never to the history, to the ages, but back to the anywhere, has it been revealed in this manner until today. What happens? It crosses. You say, well, Brother Ben, that ought to be in here and there. It never even makes a newspaper. Why? It never did in the Bible time. It never did in the days of the saints. It never did. But God takes it through just the same when it's all over them. Say, well, I didn't know it. See, you, no man can come to me except my father draws him first. Amen. That's right. True. Now, I pray, friends, that you'll understand that Jesus is the same as he was then. He'll work in you, just like he worked in Christ in that day, God will. He'll work you in the member of his body. Now, all of us can't do the same thing. Some eyes, those ears, you know how it is. How the scripture says, First Corinthians 12, some prophesy, some do one thing, some do another. But that's the gift of the Spirit working in the church, the body. And Christ has raised from the dead. Now, if he will come in this city, audible, that you can see his work doing the same as he did yesterday and that day, as I have told you, and you know that the scripture, if that was the sign that he did to prove he was Messiah to both, to both the Hebrews and to the Samaritans, he's obligated to do that to the Gentiles. How many know that? The Bible says he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Let us pray. Lord God, great Jehovah, make thyself known tonight. We believe thee to be the infallible God, the great Elohim, the great Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Rabbi, the Almighty, the Alpha, the Omega. Thou art not dead, how could God die? The tabernacle when he lived in died, but not God. He raised up that tabernacle, the body of our blessed Lord, that gave the promise, a little while in the world won't see me no more. Yet ye shall see me, for I'll be with you to the end of the world. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. Lord God, we're just men. We're just men and women. Lord God, and perhaps there might be people here who have never seen thy great power, yet they have walked with you. They have walked like Theotis and his friends. After the resurrection, they walked all day here with you. You talked to them, explained the scriptures to them, and they didn't know you. And no man can know God, only who the Son of God will reveal. And I pray, Heavenly Father, as the old and them got you on the inside and shut the door in the little restaurant, then you opened their eyes. You did something the way you did before you were crucified. And by that, they know that you're raised from the dead. 
Lord God, there is many theophias in here tonight. These children of yours, and they serve you, they walk with you, they talk with you, they listen to their pastors. And now, Lord, we've got the door shut and our heart door open. Open our eyes and manifest yourself. Do the things tonight that you did before your crucifixion. It will encourage your children to keep on serving you. It will give those who are feeble strength. It will heal those that are sick. It will cause the unbeliever to believe. Grant it, Father, and we will thank thee in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now, Lord, we submit ourselves unto thee, energize the bodies of thy servants, that we might speak, see, and hear the Lord Jesus. Amen. Just a little late, I'm sorry, because you've been waiting a long time. Tomorrow night we'll come real quick. Now, I believe Billy told me he'd give out the prayer cards. What? What? H. One to a hundred. All right. There would be prayer cards H. It's a little square card. And it's just got, uh, I don't think that my, you can have a picture on but they got a number on them and a letter. And it's got H and a one to one hundred. Now we'll start somewhere along there. We can't bring too many at a time, but we'll just bring them as we can. Let's, uh, let's start with number one, then this is the first night. Who has prayer card H number one? Just raise up your hand, go ahead and give it to me. H number one. Is it anywhere? Right. Well, we'll start from somewhere else. Oh, I'm sorry. All right. Number one, you come right here. Number two, would you raise your hand? H number two. Right there, you come here. Number three, H number three, would you raise your hand? The lady back here, right here. That's all right. The same right here, the further steps up here. Number three, number four. Who has number four? Let's see your name. H number four. Prayer card. Look, it might, some of you look at your neighbor's card. It might be, or you have your hand up, lady. Is yours eight number four? Or it's like, watch your numbers when they're called upon. Somebody might be deaf and dumb, can't speak or hear. Somebody might be so crippled and can't stand up. Just watch the cards, the people. Look. All right, number, what was that, four or five? Who has so five? All right, sister. Number six. All right, number seven. Prayer card number seven is you, lady. Eight, nine, come out here, lady, each one. Now, if you call your number, line up over here. Number nine, number nine, did I hit that one? All right, number ten, prayer card number ten, gentlemen. Number eleven, eleven, all right, twelve, that's it. Raise that up as quickly as you can. You can't raise your hand, somebody else come get you. Twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fourteen, fifteen, fifteen. Prayer card number 15, would you raise your hand? All right. We like one card, 15. All right, no, she's 14. 16. Prayer card 16, all right, sir. 17. A lady of a man or a might have stepped down. 17, 18. 18, all right, 19. 20. I believe that's about as many as we stand right now. So I give you my Bible. <laughs> no, that's all right. Now, maybe if the people just see you wouldn't have come up here, they want you to make this call. Right? Like this story. And you can go back home. Many of them can walk. If they can't walk, then you bring them up here. Now I'm about 15 minutes late to start the line. This is the first night. A lot of upset. You know what I mean. Now I'm forced to just think preaching and it's just one meeting right at the other, right at the other, right at the other, right at the other, right at the other. It's right just all kinds of weather from the north to the south. And, and it's not cold, it's just overtaxed body. Now, now I would have asked you, how many in here that does not have a prayer card, and yet you're sick and you want God to heal you, would you raise up your hand so you just have a gentle confession? Oh, it's just all over every person. Now look. Now, if these people here, now I want to ask, how many of you in the prayer line here that strangers need? I don't know you. Just raise up your hand. Use the line here. 
saints. How many out there are saved that said, I don't know? Raise up in here, anyone. What's the solid everyone? I don't know one person in here outside of Mr. Mercer here, Mr. Vale, and Brother Jenny here. And um, maybe I might go to some of those ministers. I was looking at them a lot. It would seem like I've seen these conventions and so forth, I believe, but maybe not all of them. I can't call anyone's name, this fella here. It seemed like I'd seen him and the girl, fella here. Are you Brother Wilson, are you? Yes. I thought so. All right. That's about, that's about the limit that I would know. Now look. Now I have just explained to you by the Bible that all healing comes from God and is already finished work. How many know that now? How many know that if Jesus, the Son of God, was standing right here with this suit on, as some of you people sent me the other day, all right? How would I, how could, if he was standing here and you come to him and say, Lord Jesus, will you heal me? Now be careful. Could he do it? He could not. He's already done it. It was in the atonement. But how many know that? He was a child of mine. Don't you know I've already done it? Do you believe it? Yes, Lord, I believe it. All right. On your way, as you had believed, so be it. How many know that would be yes? How many know that he's already healed everybody? If I just wonder, every gifted blessing, everything that can be done for the human race is already done. When Jesus finished the work and said it's finished the Calvary, you know that every gifted blessing. Now, some of you ministers might not believe in divine healing. But how could you preach salvation to the soul without divine healing? What is sickness? Sickness is an attribute of sin. What is sin? Smoking? Drinking? No. Committing adultery? No. Well, what's that? That's an attribute of unbelief. What is sin? There's only one sin that's unbelief. He that believeth not is condemned already. Hallelujah. Only two. Faith and unbelief. You're on one side. If you are a believer, you don't smoke, drink, and commit adultery. But because you don't do it, don't make you believe it. See? No, sir. It's just an attribute. What is sickness? Sickness is an attribute of sin. Before we had any sin, we had no sickness. Sickness came in because of sin. How many know that? Well, sure. Well, then, look. If a great big animal had you and it's pulling your side, pulling the ribs out. Now, you wouldn't be necessary for you to cut that paw off if he wasn't biting you. You would have cut his paw and just knock him in the head. That killed the whole thing. <laughs> is that right? Well, that's the way sickness is. When you kill sin, you kill sickness with it. Right. You can't preach salvation without taking everything that ever happened to the human race. He was our redeemer. True. Your redeemer. Amen. Yes, sir. Even this old body, when it dies, like our soul dies, and our spirit is born again, we're new creatures of eternal life. Forever, forever, we never die with eternal life. You can't. It's eternal. It's only God's own life. True. Can't die. All right. Then, when you are sick, and you, and you go and you die and go into the grave, when God comes, Christ comes, you're called from the dust. Already finished work. God calls a new mind. You don't have to come down and make an atonement, make you out and make you another person. He just speaks and you come forth. That's right. Well, now what is this? What is salvation we have now? It is the earnest of our completeness in God. Well, we'll never have the more thoughts of things. What is sickness now? What is healing of our body? It is the earnest money of our resurrection. Perfect. Now, believe. Now, and I want you now just to be just as reverent as you can be and believe with all that's in you. Don't move around. But now, when the Holy Spirit is speaking, if he does, how many seen the picture of it tonight? Let's see, how many have ever seen the picture right here in Washington, D.C.? We'll get it for you tomorrow night. An angel of the Lord that's right here in Washington, D.C., George J. Layton, the head of the FBI, and that examined, got this signed document right here, the only supernatural being that was ever photographed in the world. Just a few of them. Now, for we have to get them from the American Photographer Association, the Dudley Studios out of Texas, where it was taken. They see it in Germany a few months ago, three times they're coming, going back to the pillar of fire, the same one that followed the children of Israel in the days of Israel's journey. How many know it was a pillar of fire? How many know that was right? Yeah. That shows your call. That's what makes it. That's good, brother. Right. 
That's there. When he was here on earth, he said, I come from God. I return to God. When he come on earth, when he was with the children of Israel, he was a pillar of fire. He's in the burning bush. Jesus, when he was on earth, he said, I am that I am was in the bush. Is that right? He was. All right. Then he said, I come from that, I return to that. After his death, burial, and resurrection, Paul met him on the road down to Damascus. What was he? A light that put Paul's eyes out, standing in his presence. <laughs> right. Now here's his picture again, right here again. I keep telling it, and George Ray, he said, I'll be your creep to you, Mr. Brown. But said, I said it was psychology, but said the mechanical eye of this camera won't take psychology. That's the head of the FBI. And they were sitting down. It, it was absolutely there. That same angel is not two foot from where I'm standing out. But I'm alive. Oh, not for me, it's for you. It's for us, the church, the believers. We're right in the days of the coming of the Lord. He has returned to see the sin that's gone on just like it is in Abraham's time for it's destroying Lot and so forth of the starting of Mark. We'll get into that later this week. We have the time for it now. I'll be real reverent. Watch, believe. Now, Lord, from henceforth it's your service, it's been yours all along. But now speak, Lord, one word from you will be more than millions from all of us ministers. We are your children. We love to speak of it, but just one word from you will be more than anything we could do. Grant me blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Now you without your prayer card, just start saying, Lord, I believe that man told the truth because he touched from the scripture. Now I'm touching your garment. And make it going to me tonight, myself. I can't get up there on the prayer on the line. But let him speak. If I touch you, let him speak and call me from here and tell me that he, he, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And you start believing that. Please. Don't make yourself nervous. Just believe. Just let your nervousness go. Now, the little lady, I suppose she's on me. She's with a little on, on her head, your little cap. And I suppose this is our first time meeting, is it, lady? You saw me. It's probably in a meeting. Oh, I didn't meet you. In a conviction. All right. Now, of course, I have no way of knowing you or what's wrong with you or anything. You know that. I'm just a man and you're a woman. Now, here is a beautiful Bible picture being portrayed. Not in some dark corner, like the devil tried to do, but out here where everybody can see. And God doesn't have to get in the dark corner. God's the God of life. Now, Jesus and a woman spoke to each other at the well of Samaria. And there was a man and a woman meeting first. And Jesus found out what her trouble was and told her. But that she said, we, you must be a prophet. That would be a servant of the Messiah. But she said, I know when the Messiah comes. We know, we Americans, we know when the Messiah comes, he'll show these signs. You believe that? In your own religion, you, you, you're told that. You, she knows that, she said. All right, that's good. Now, just as a man, then it's Messiah raised from the dead. He's here in the form of the Holy Spirit. Now, if I say, lady, you're sick, you might not be. If I say, lady, you won't find it, you might not. I say, lady, you're saying for somebody else, you might not. I don't know. But if I say, you're sick, you have to hit it right, you're going to get well. Well, you say, that should have been a guess. See? But now if the Holy Spirit will come and go back and say something that you know whether it's truth or not, that, that you, you, you can witness that. You know that. But now if I'm telling you something in the future, you have a right to doubt it. But it tells you something that's in the past, you know whether it's the truth or not. Now, is, that, is that truth that I'm saying? That, that's the miracle. Let her be the judge, and you be the judge. Not that we're judging God, but we're loving God, and we're glad that He is raised from the dead. Now, I'm saying that I believe that He will do it. If He will just, being the first person here, if He will just make known to me your trouble as your brother, which you are a Christian, and, and if you would just speak through me and tell me what you're here for or something like that, you'd accept that He knows your name and you're going to get what you ask for. You believe that? Will the rest of the audience read it with you? I see why I'm trying to find favor with the, with the Holy Spirit to see that you people will believe you. you. Read the book, he said, if you get the people to believe you, I said, I'm uneducated. He said, this will be given to you. And then he told me about it in the scripture. Then it's been ever since I was a little baby boy. Thousands of times you never seen. I'll be real, real blessed. 
Now, if the Lord God, if I could help you and wouldn't do it, I'd be an awful person. But I couldn't help you. But God can. Now, if the Lord will tell me what's your trouble, you're going to believe it. Now, if anybody, if they can still hear my voice in the audience, the woman's moving from And she is suffering with a heart trouble. That's exactly right. And that's a nervous heart. The nervous condition. And then I notice she trying to read or do something. Your eyes are going back. That's true. And then you have a, a female trouble, which is a growth on the female organ. It should be operating. And so you've been told that. He said the doctor said that to be done. If that's true, raise your hand. You believe in Jesus Christ? Can I heal the woman? No. But I believe she's already healed. I believe her faith. Now, was every word, I don't know what I said to you. See, see the recording going there? That tells what it was. See? That was somewhere in another another world, or to you scientists, another dimension. You Christians in the Spirit of God. Amen. All right. Uh, here's a woman, never met her before. Whatever he told her, she's got her hands up, and it's absolutely the truth. And this is our first time ever meeting and speaking to each other in the world. What is it? Jesus, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Sir, we would see Jesus. Now, that's your brother, you know. It can't be me. Some power knows her. Now, it depends on what you think the power is. You think it's the Holy Spirit? You get that we want. Let us say Heavenly Father, grant unto this dear woman the things that she has desired. I pray for this blessing to her in the name of our Son, the Lord Jesus. Amen. I don't doubt going to see just exactly what you've asked for and you receive it. Everybody be real heaven. <coughs> Suppose we're strangers to each other. I thank you raised up your hand a few minutes ago. It's our first time meeting. The Lord Jesus knows us both. And someday we've got to stand in his presence. Now tonight, be a little nervous because it's the audience of people, wonderful people, but it begins to rise a little. You can't help it, see, when you make the nervous tension. If I don't know you, and the Lord Jesus will tell me what you're here for, would you believe me to be his servant? Did he promise he would do that? Is there anyone in the audience knows you? There is. Then they'll know where the truth is. You know. Now to he and you, I could. To hide your life, you could. Because it's his presence. Now you're aware that something's going on. You know that standing before a man, your brother, would make you feel that. But it's so the audience would know. You're a same looking person, you know. A real sweet, humble like you. Is that right? That angel of the Lord is setting right around the woman, I'm looking right at it. The woman wants me to pray for some condition that she has, and that is her limbs, her legs. That thus saith the Lord. Now, best I think that they're Now, see, the more you would talk to her, more would be saved. Now, whatever it was, I see something the woman is doing or something, whatever it was, she'd be the witness. I just talk to her a little more. See, you can't get to too many, but let's just tonight just be take her time. Just a stitch your, stitch your limb. And also you get some kind of a condition that's in your side. It's gallbladder trouble. Exactly the truth. And you're deeply distressed about someone. That's a loved one. That's your son. He's not here. He's in another city. And that place is called Rono. And he is suffering with a mental condition. It's called, he's a veteran, a young man, not Second World War. That's exactly right. That's thus saith the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. You believe Jesus Christ who knows you now? And your case is right in this hand. Do you believe you will receive what you've asked for? That's how you Dear God, I pray that you'll be merciful to our sister and give to her these things that she has. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Now the Bible says these signs shall follow them that believe. And if you go and believe it, but be real reverent. Don't fool around, please. You see, if, if you do, it's upset. Be real reverent. I suppose this is our first time meeting. We're strangers to each other and probably born years apart and miles apart. Now, please don't do that, friends. Don't move. Just sit still just a minute, will you please? I'll, I'll, I'll leave you another five minutes if you'll listen. Now, don't move. <clears throat> See, you've got to be reverent in the presence of God. The Holy Spirit said to me when he met me that night, if you get the people to believe you, then you've got to do what I tell you. If you believe me to be the servant of Christ, I say just the things that he says to say. I believe you. The lady and I are strangers. She's younger than I. We don't know each other. And this is our first time meeting. But God knows about both of them. If he will reveal to me what your trouble is, you will believe that he is the resurrected Christ working through just his church here. You will believe. <coughs> the Lord God grant to you. Your trouble is a nervous condition. Then you got trouble in your chest. That is your nerve tightening you up. And you've just had a, some kind of an accident, or you fell on ice and hurt. That's hurt your spine. And you're a, you're a preacher, a lady preacher. That's right. That's right. And you got somebody on your heart that's dear to you. It's somebody in your own congregation. It's someone that's got cancer in the last stage, and you won't pray for her. That's just to say it the Lord. <laughs> now the tears on the handkerchief put it on. Lord God, grant these things as I pray and bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Look out. Believe what you ask. How do you do? You ready? Now, lady, you sitting at your head down praying. Here. You touched something. I don't know yet you. You believe me to be Christ's servant? You do. You're wanting something from God, aren't you? The reason was this woman a few moments ago had something wrong in her chest. I saw you standing here before me. You suffer with a, a heart trouble. That's right. And you got a high blood pressure too. If that's right, raise up your hand. You touched something. I never seen you have it. If you touch something, he heals you then. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> now, I'm in the audience now. Be real. Yeah. That gives us a thrill to the woman right behind you there with the red coat on you has a bladder trouble. That's right, baby. You believe it? God makes you well now? No, right. You can have it. If you believe it. All right, that's good. The Mennonite brother there next to you there, praying also with a heart trouble. You believe that God will make you well, sir? You touched me. It's over. Have faith in God. Myself, I know you not. But the Lord God does know you. If the Lord God who created heaven and earth will reveal to me what you're standing here for, will you believe it? You are suffering with a condition in your back, a back trouble. You have a throat trouble also. That's right. A gallbladder trouble, you're bothering. You're not from this city. No. If the Lord would tell me something about you, where you're from, would you believe with all your heart? You're trying to press into something, lady. That won't do no good. To you. Won't do no good. You just believe, just simply, just childlike faith. You just believe. You're at a place called Madison, Virginia. Your name's Rose. Your last name's Nicholson. Now that's true. Now turn around and go home and believe with all your heart and be well. 
Give thou to the Lord. 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 Or oh, four weeks. When that little blind girl was healed up there and the child was on the crippled feet and they went into who's who. That's the day there. That was back in time when his brother Bob was and then the wonderful brother. I remember the people climbing up on the sky to see through the knee. Uh, brother Rediger's tabernacle. The old brother Rediger years ago. And we're strangers to each other exactly. I don't know you. You're passing through a line where thousands of people went through. No one would ever know. Mm-hmm. Is there ever something happened? Mm-hmm. All right, now be real, ready. Just believe with all your heart. God will grant to you the things that you're asking for. Mm-hmm. You're suffering with several things. I see you. You've been had an operation or something. I see you going two times. That's You've had two operations. Then you got. An inward trouble, an internal trouble. And that was caused from childbirth. It's a sore. That's been many, many years ago when you was a younger woman. That's the thing. You believe that God knew you? That's the All the eternal God, author of life, send out blessings upon the woman and make her well, Father. I pray that you'll grant these things in the name of thy son, Jesus. Okay. Just believe with all your heart, and the Bible, as the Bible said, if thou canst believe, all things are possible. All right. I'm getting a shot back there. Somebody thought Jesus perceived a thought. How many of you? Ever the last ask you something, lady? Put your hand on me. If God will reveal to me what's your trouble looking this way, would you believe me? All right, then your heart won't bother you no more. You can go home and be well. <laughs> if you can believe me, don't, don't get ego down, you see. That makes you uh, very bad if you do that. You believe that there, little lady, peeping around the side of that little lady, said you have heart trouble, she's sitting way back there, and your fingers are now. You believe that God made you well? If you believe it, you have it. Heart trouble also. Thou can't be. Right back behind there also, you had heart trouble, you got a rupture too. You believe that God will make it well? Raise your hand up, Mr. Swinney. Yeah. What if I told you you were healed before you come up here? Would you take my word for it? And turn around and go back. <laughs> <laughs> just before you come up there, you just stand where you are right there, brother. Leave it back. Just right there. Just you. you believe me to be a servant? Yeah. You're a shadow of darkness. That's dead. You've got a cancer. You believe that God will heal it? Yeah. Raise up your hands. I accept you, Jesus, with my hands. God bless you. Now go on your road and don't think more about it. Go on and believe with all your heart. If you can. Just stay where you are, lady. You believe me to serve You believe that that trouble is going to lead you to be all right. If you do raise up your hand, all right, you can go right around this way and you may go right ahead and leave him with all your Do you believe out there in the office? Yes, I can believe. That lets you move that trouble left the lady there. That's your duty. You're going to go on your own and rejoice. Believe. You also, lady. All right, you're back also. It's going to be a condition that's been for a long time. That's right. How many out there want to be healed? You believe that God will make you well? That man's so 
rejoicing about being healed that heart trouble or whatever it was few minutes ago. The man sat next to him was all thrilled. But he had an asthmatic condition that he wanted to be healed by. Do you believe so that God will heal you that asthma and make you well? Doesn't that fact that was a man that was healed with a heart trouble? You do? Well, then you can have it. You can go on your own and rejoice and say, thank you, Lord. How many want to be healed? Raise your hand. See, I've helped you too long to get restless, the spirit here, maybe I can eat buffers and things like that. I don't want to be rude, but I want you to do something for me. Lay your hands over on each other. Just put your hands over on each other. Right here, folks, we don't have much trouble. Lay your hands right here on each other. Friends, do you believe that the Son of God, who I'm trying to tell you loves you, do you believe that he's here to say amen? Amen. Is this what the Bible said would take place? Amen. Now remember, this is more than what he did when he was here. Because one person touched him and he got so weak he couldn't move. Or he couldn't get moved, but he said virtue went from you. Virtue strength. But he said, these things that I do shall you do also and more than this. And we're at the end time now. That's the reason I did it. I'm weak, that's true. That's true. Now, it's this vision that does it. You think that so many come through that you don't know which is where you're in vision or out of vision. See? It's for you. It's the Lord God that's good to you to show you. Now, friends, I don't know what more he could do. I don't know one thing more he could do. He's proved to you that he's not dead, he's alive, and in here. Now, what good would we be standing here knowing if you were out there and wouldn't believe it? It takes your faith, your faith is what touches him and does these things. It isn't me. You, I don't operate that. You operate it with your own faith is what does it. See? It's you, not me. You. And what is it? It's showing that this, a, a person, a man, nothing at all and just a man like you, like you man. Probably the rapture is coming, righteousness was declared to go first. You ever want to go before me? I was born out of season. A lot of you people here were preaching the gospel. But when I was just a little local Baptist pastor down there, and you stood for these things, see? It's God's goodness and mercy to you people. Please, me, friends, please, me, is your brother. I'm telling you from all my heart that it's God sent to you. Not me. I'm not God sent to you. The Holy Spirit is God's gift sent to you, see? And it's for you. And every one of you that can believe it and accept it on the basis of the resurrection of Christ and accept it, you're healed right now. Hallelujah. Now, let us pray. And you pray for the person sitting next to you, and each one of you pray for the one sitting next to you, the way you pray in your church. If you're Baptist, pray the way the Baptist pray. If you're Pentecost, pray the way they pray. Whatever it is, just pray the way you pray. For every one sitting next to you that you're praying for. I'll pray for all of you. Lord God, pray your